Shalom, this is Ammon Utaik of Piscataway, Sophia Spiritualite, the Ameru Khan Maryam, and we are here with a video that I hope will be informative and will lay the foundation for um, <laughs> a lot of very interesting content coming soon. So, um, this is taken from the Law of Time website. We're just going to go through. Um, this is about the 13 moon calendar. Now, the 13 moon calendar is um, basically kind of like what the um, Druids would have used. Very similar. It's based on the moon cycles. Um, the key difference with this calendar is that they have a literal day out of time. This calendar is taken from the Mayan calendar, the Mayan um, little wheel calendar. This is this is taken from that. This is a this is how um, some people have interpreted how to use that calendar. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna do some pretty deep diving into this because first and foremost, I can say um, a group of our enemies that look much very much like us, uh, feathered headdresses. Um, they have been using this against us and it's not going to be obvious until we go into like the personal stuff, which you're more than welcome to come to the website, look up your actual sign and what it means and all of that. But I'm not going to go into that yet. I just want to get a good handle on what the 13 moon calendar is and how to use it. Um, and then we'll go into, um, different ways that this information can apply to you personally. Um, that being said, there's a tone and a frequency for each day that's based on this 13 moon calendar. And um, our enemies have been using this against us. I don't know how exactly yet, but I may as well go ahead on out and say it because it is the absolute truth. Because much like the astrology and the zodiac has been used against us by professional victims unit number one, professional victims unit number two has mastered this Mayan calendar and used it against us. Now I can see immediately a few different ways it can be used against us, but um, there's there's far more than um, I'm, I'm sure of yet. So I want to go ahead on, put this out here, let everybody start to marinate in this in this information. So what is a 13 moon calendar? The 13 moon 28 day calendar is a new standard of time for all people everywhere who desire a genuinely new world. If the calendar and time we follow is irregular, artificial and mechanized, so becomes our mind. As is our mind, so our world becomes. As is our world today. Um, as is our world today, irregular, artificial, and mechanized. But if the calendar we follow is harmonic in tune with natural cycles, so also will our mind become. And so we may return to a way of life more spiritual and in harmony with nature. The 13 moon calendar synchronizes solar and galactic cycles on July 26, correlating with the star of Sirius. Each of the 13 moons has a power, action, and quality which define an annual program to synchronize our consciousness with the galactic cycles. A perfect as a perfect measure of cosmic time, this calendar is also a synchro synchron synchronometer. Synchrometer? Syn synchronometer? Synchronometer, let's say synchronometer, an instrument for measuring synchronicity. Follow daily, it gives us a new lens in which to perceive Hi. events. New time, in a new time, synchronicity is the norm. The 13 moon 28 day synchrono synchro synchronometer, I don't know why I'm having a hard time with that word, is a harmonic time space matrix. It takes the moon 28 days to orbit the earth. It makes the, this orbit 13 times a year. The standard measure is the 28 day cycle called a moon, not a month. It is the median between the 29.5 synodic cycle of the moon, new moon to new moon, and the 27.1 day sidereal cycle of the moon. Hence it is, me hence it is a measure 
of Earth's solar orbit using the 28 day lunar standard. This creates a perfect orbital measure of 13 moons in 28 days, totaling 364 days or 52 perfect weeks of seven days each. Because, oh, because the 365 day, 65th day is no day of the moon or week at all, it is known as a day out of time, a day to celebrate peace through culture and time is art. This is what this guy says, Jose. We're going to look at him too. The 13 moon calendar is an evolutionary tool to assist humanity in the unprecedented act of uniting itself on one issue central to its complete well-being, time. The harmonic convergence of humanity on this one issue combined with the inescapable order, perfection, and simplicity following the 13 moon calendar will lift the species as a sim simultaneous whole into the galactic timing frequency of 13 and 20. Here's the problem with what he said. Let's just, let's, let's, let's just cut to the chase on that here's the problem now i do believe that this 13 moon calendar has a lot of good use that we so we can tie into the galactic and the cosmic timeline but the physical timeline in the gregorian calendar ties us to this physical earth which is not necessarily a bad thing because it is the gift given to us by the holy spirit the ability to understand this quote unquote um made up time that he just said that our Gregorian calendar is on. Now I have never been one to badmouth the Gregorian calendar because I understand that it lands on days that are important to us and that we celebrate, i.e. Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, stuff like that. Um birthdays are tied to Gregorian. It's very uh which have their own unique symbology. It's very, it's not unimportant. So, but as we learned um, in the video that I made yesterday about the inheritance of um, Almathea, her inheritance is specifically tied to paternal timing, the timing of the father, the physical realm timing. And so while the cosmic timing is quite important, absolutely, it should not be uh, diminished as less important than the physical realm timing because we need both. We are spirit beings having a physical experience. Yes, we should be in tune with the cosmic timing, but we should also be in tune with the physical timing. That is what allows us to operate within the paternal realm and the maternal realm as one. The, 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 the mother and the father are one. Our mother and our father are one. Remember the Shema. So these two separate calendars are really one calendar that can be used as one calendar. Um, we have to integrate this new information in. I don't know how to do that yet. How, uh, you know, as I've kind of figured things out, I will, of course, present new information. But we have to reject people that say, oh, we have to do one thing or the other. No, this is a time of harmonizing all the information, taking the best of every lifetime and every life cycle and doing something with it, not rejecting this, rejecting that, cobbling pieces and bits together. No, it's about harmonizing the information, not separating it out, taking the good and leaving the, leaving the scraps. No, we take everything. It's a hundred plus a hundred, you know, <sighs> excuse me. I'm sorry. My nose. This is one of the problems I had with the whole five ratio, you know, um, you know, the most high is not a, a, a 1.618. Well, that's a, the most high is complete. So what's, how do you, how do you have five being 1.618? And you just totally uh, uh, miss out on the other part of that. That's crazy. Well, that's why you need the 0.382, which is the, the, the daughter. And then you have a one whole complete unit. So it's there's a marker at the 1, there's a marker at the 6.18, and there's a marker at the 3.82. And you have it, a one complete unit based off of a structure of two pieces or three three individual pieces, which is really four pieces, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. All right, let's go to the next um, page. We're just going to read a few of these. Okay. It's kind of complicated. 
So you'll, you'll have to do some research and study of this on your own. If I find any good websites or videos, I'll also link them. All right, the 13 moon calendar names of 13 moons correspond to the 13 galactic tones of creation. Did you know there was a tone of creation? Um, each of the 13 moons is saturated with meaning and all together they form a whole vision sequence of cosmic order. Each year also serves as a planetary service wave spell. Planetary service wave spell? Um, before we introduce the names of, of the 13 moons, please consider the names of the 12 months of the Gregorian calendar. We're not going to consider these names because it's not true. He, they, they just took the most basic, I, I just, I'm not going to get into that. All right, let's look at these moons. So, um, at the bottom of the screen here, it tells you the whole names, but you can see on the chart as well. So you have the number one, the magnetic bat moon is from July 26th to August 22nd. The lunar scorpion moon is from August 23rd through September the 19th. The electric deer moon is September 20th through October 17th. The self-existing owl moon is October 18th through November 14th. The overtone peacock moon is November 15th through December 12th. The rhythmic lizard moon is December 13th through January the 9th. The resonant monkey moon is from January 10th to February 6th. The galactic hawk moon is from February 7th to March 6th. The solar jaguar moon is from March 7th to April 3rd. The planetary dog moon is from April 4th to May 1st. The spectral serpent moon is from May 2nd to May 29th. The crystal rabbit moon is from May 30th to June 26th. The cosmic turtle moon is from June 27th through July 24th. And in a day out of time is July 25th. Okay. I'm so sorry. Let's look at the tutorial. My congestion is really bad. All right. The new, the coming new era on our planet has everything to do with a change of timing frequency. The 13 moon 28 day calendar is a simple tool that helps us to raise our frequency and gives us a new lens to view both our day to day and planetary events. Because both the Gregorian and 13 moon calendars operate with 52 seven day weeks, annually 364 days, the 13 moon calendar provides a perfect daily transition tool for hooking back up with the higher dimensional order. It's simple to follow. Is it is a simple to follow day to day as it is marked with the dates of the Gregorian calendar. All right. The 13 moon calendar is com is comprised of elegantly simple cycles, namely the 7-day week and 28-day moon. Unlike the Gregorian calendar, the days of the moon or month and the days of the week line up perfectly, week to week and moon to moon. This makes the 13 moon 28 day calendar a perpetual calendar. Let's go into more detail and you'll see what we mean. So here you have the seven day week. Um, each of the four weeks has a unique uh, power. Week one is red, which knowledge inix initiates view. Week, week two is white, which humility redefine, refines mediation. Week three is blue, or patience transforms conduct. And week four is yellow, power ripens fruit. At the, at the top, you will see are the new names and symbols for the days of the week. The days are Dali, Selly, Gamma, Cali, Alpha, Lemmy, and Cilio. Cilio. All right. You'll learn more about this below. For now, this graphic simply illustrates to you this structure of 28 days. What? Yo, what is going on? Oh, this structure of 28 days and four perfect seven day weeks is exactly the same. All 13 moons of the 13 moon calendar. So basically what they're saying, the first, 8th, 15th, and 22nd days of the moon will always be Dali days, meaning the days are always the same. Then you have a day out of time. Um, all right, harmonic standard, perpetual 13 moon calendar year. 
13 moons times 28 days equals 364 days or 52 seven day weeks. The 365 day of the year is called the day out of time, a day to celebrate peace through culture. Time is art, practice universal forgiveness so that everyone can start the next year fresh. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go through this. So, because they, he really has a problem with, with our father's calendar. And it makes me have a problem. Here's the whole module. This is for the whole, um, all the gateways or something like that. It shows you all the units. Um, we're just not going to go through all of this. So, most of the days are different. Let's see. In their calendar, they're showing this to you so you can understand. In their calendar, it tells you the days. It tells you um, the several radio plasmas, which are getting ready to go to. That's what I want to talk about. The moon date, the Gregorian date, the solar seals. And the lunar phases, so you can know what's going on. That's what their calendars look like. So here we go. You see that each of these days lines up with a chakra point. So Dali, the thermic force, is with the crown chakra. Gamma, which is the lumic thermic force. Or Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at the one at the bottom. It might make more sense. So Dali is, I feel the heat. Right? Then gamma is, I attain the power of peace. Then alpha is, I release the double extended electron at the South Pole. That's something they talk about in the other one. Then um, cilio, which is the heart, um, I discharge the mental electron neutron at the center of the earth. Lemmy, which is the solar plexus. I purify the mental electron at the North Pole. Cali, which is the sacral. I catalyze the light heat within. And then Selly, which is the root. Um, I see the light. I don't think this is right. So I'm not going to. I don't. It doesn't. First of all. It doesn't match. I don't. It doesn't match. Like, to me, the blue should probably be in the center. Um, or it's going to be, it, it's something that's not right. Anyway, we're not going to get into it. I'm going to go back and do my, some more research. Um, so anyway, because, we're, you know me, it's not right. It don't, the color, look at this. Who got a chakra system? It's not even the fact that they only have these colors, right? Who got a chakra system that don't line up with the days? If the order of the days is Dali, Selly, Gamma, Cali, Alpha, Lemmy, Silo, which has the colors in repeating order, which makes sense, why would it line up on your chakras differently? <laughs> that's stupid. So I have a feeling that's been tampered with, but we'll, we'll get back to that. So, um... This shows you the, okay, so here are the tones. Let's talk about this. So you have a magnetic tone, which is the essence is purpose, unify, and attract. I'm not going to read all these. You got magnetic, lunar, electric, self-existing, overtone, rhythmic, resonant, galactic, solar, planetary, spectral, crystal, cosmic. And then as far as the solar seals, you have dragon, wind, night, seed, serpent, World, Bridger, Hand, Star, Moon, Dog, Monkey, Human, Skywalker, Wizard, Eagle, Warrior, Earth, Mirror, Storm, and Sun. I know I am a white mirror. Um, hold on. It's just a way of um, conceptualizing or organizing the information. Oh, White Galactic Mirror. So... My little tone is that galactic one. Integrity, harmonize, and model. And then the mirror, endless, reflects order. I certainly reflect what people give to me. 
All right. So then they have an oracle. So let's read about this. So now you've learned how to follow the 13 moon calendar day by day. Let's go a little bit down this galactic rabbit hole. What, within the daily galactic signature, also called the galactic gateway, is also the fifth fourth, fifth force oracle. One metaphor to describe the fifth force oracle is that if the galactic signature is the fourth dimensional flower bud, the fifth fourth fifth force oracle is the shimmering flower blossom. Why would they make this a tongue twister? I'm sorry. Um, what is the fifth force? Contemporary science describes four major forces in the universe. Strong, weak, electromagnetic, and gravitational. The fifth force is the one that binds them all together. And it's called the syn synchronotic G-force, sometimes called ether akasha. It is the force which synchronizes the universe. Every galactic gateway, as you know, has a solar seal and galactic tone, but also packed inside is the dense synchronic synchron. Oh, somebody help me say that word. Synchron, synchron, synchronic, synchronic. Oh, oh my God. Okay, power of the G force. It is the purpose of the fifth force oracle to tap into this deeper cyclical pattern and to amp up the level of meaning that can be gleaned from each galactic gateway and more. So the, you may have heard of G-Force. Oh my gosh. If you did any of the research into the um, um, human design, yes, human design. You have a G for everybody has a G force in um, in their chart. And some people, if you're a manifesting generator specifically, um, you have your G force activated. Um, I think manifestors have G force, um, the G location activated, right? All right. So this is their little Oracle that they made, which is interesting. Um, they have four leaves plus a central matrix. The Oracle board is red, um, from East, which is red, North, which is white, West, which is blue, South is yellow and in center. Why do they always read stuff backwards? What is, I mean, literally, why is everything always read backwards with these people, man? They read the astrology backwards. There's no excuse for that. There's no reason for that. To always be reading everything in backwards. I mean, they're just sending people backwards in time. Why not send them forwards in time? Uh, okay. Beginning with the east, red, right hand, red leaf. Oh my gosh. Find the fifth force oracle with the red dragon solar seal. Oh my God. These, these, these titles is killing me. Um, I'm not going to do this. So we're going to have to, uh, we'll have to come back to this because I can't, I have to have another way to describe this. And they also call this new earth, newospheric earth time. Um, it's an apple. apple. Okay. Um, which is just annoying. Um, okay. Let's go on to the next thing. Cause I can't, um, um, let's look at this guy. Cause I want to talk about him now. His name is Jose Argulis. Uh, I'm not going to use his, his magic name. Um, cause I don't want to invoke him, but listen, let me tell y'all something. The first thing I noticed about this picture is that he is wearing the same thing as Jesus. He clearly believes he is in the same caliber of Mother Mary and, and our brother. Because he's got on a red shirt. He's got on the blue thing. That is exactly how... Well, usually Jesus wears red on the inside and blue on the outside. And Mary wears blue on the inside and red on the outside. So he literally thinks he's Jesus. Okay, so let's... And his name is Jose, so... Um, but he literally thinks he's Jesus. So just keep that in mind. He is literally wearing the colors, the, the clothing of icons, like iconographic, iconographic. 
that the right word? Iconographic colors, okay? Let's talk about him. His name is Jose Agrules. He was born January 24th, 1939 in Rochester, Minnesota. He and his twin brother, Ian, were the son of a Mexican father and a German-American mother and lived their first five years in Mexico. Pause right there. Now, this may mean nothing. You know, to, yesterday, if I had read this, this, this probably would have meant nothing. But remember, that book, the Lyrica, Lyrica Germanica, which is the um you know part of our inheritance is it outlines the paternal spend splendor of course was written in german right and so here this guy has a german mother and a mexican father and then they go down to mexico where they can learn this um where they or, or i'm not going to say steal you know i prefer to say steal but let's say learn they can learn this mayan calendar because this guy you know i'm not um making any claims about who he is because i don't know this man but it sure does sound like a um cardboard cutout person to me if i've ever heard one <laughs> so let's keep going Aguiles was best known as the initiator of the world famous harmonic convergence global peace meditation which occurred august 16th and 17th 1987 during that time he also awakened the mass consciousness to a significance of the year 2012 and turn the world's attention towards the Maya and their calendric system. His best-selling work, The Mayan Factor, gives credence to the Mayan calendar cycles of natural time and reveals the historically unprecedented galactic shift in time coming July 12th, I mean in 2012, and entry into a new galactic beam beginning July 26, 2013. Jose was also recognized as one of the creators of Earth Day. Now, hold on. Now, you got this guy, Mexican from Minnesota, and is one of the creators of Earth Day. I just... <sighs> All right. Um, now in his 43rd year in Davis, California, during the fifth annual Whole Earth Festival in 1974, he received a special commendation from the state of California for being the father of the whole earth festival. What? What? The father of the whole earth festival. Father of the whole earth. Okay. This, they gave him that, um, they gave him that title, right? Okay, Father of the Whole Earth Festival. Uh, for his contribution to the art and culture of California. You know what else started in California? Mm, about 10 years after that, 19... Uh, actually, I think it might've started at the same time, but Burning Man, very, very, very close to that time, Burning Man started. So they took one group and they went off and did Burning Man. And they had this other group that they took off to go into the academic side as far as this whole peace culture is concerned, right? Do not think that these things are not related. I mean, other people may have more history, but we we literally just got all this information about Burning Man because of the, the crazy stuff that happened. And now you've got another thing that comes out about the same time in California. Can be a coincidence, Okay. His love of art and culture inspired him to obtain his PhD in art history and aesthetics from the University of Chicago in 1969. His academic career led to professorships at Princeton University, University of California, Davis, the Evergreen State College, Naropa Institute, San Francisco State University, San Francisco Institute of Art, University of Colorado, Denver, and the Union Graduate School. Listen. You don't get involved with all those schools, especially UC Davis, especially um, San Francisco State, these San Francisco Institute of Art. These are high level schools. You don't just wake up and be like, oh, yeah, I'm joining these. I, I'm going to be a professor in these schools with a freaking degree in aesthetics. That's like that's like me waking up today and say, you know, what? I'm going to get a degree in tarot and then I'm going to go to Princeton. And I'm going to make them hire me. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay, I, I'm only going through this because I want y'all to be able to read these people's bios and say, 
No, nah, this don't make sense. Especially since they don't actually mention the names of his parents. That is um, another key indicator that they don't want you to know who they are because then they will tell you the names so you don't have that question. But they tell you the name of his brother. See, this is how this is how you have to read these kind of bios and, and so that you can uh, detect whether something unusual is going on. Okay? All right. Author of numerous philosophical and cultural essays, as well as poetry, his pioneering books were translated into many languages and include The Mayan Factor, Earth Ascending, Surfers of the Zuvulia, The Arcturus Probe, Time and the Technosphere, The Law of Time and Human Affairs, and the seven-volume Cosmic History Chronicles with Stephanie South and Manifesto for the Newosphere, The Evolution of Human Consciousness, for full bibliography, see the low. Listen, this sounds exactly like that militant philosophy thing. Like, how could he have possibly written all of these books plus a seven-volume cosmic history? Do that even sound right? I mean, I need y'all to really, like, ponder these things. Like, it don't even sound right. It sounds like some something that was made up. You know, like, no, no, no. It sounds like something they found found remember they found it and then they colonized it and said that they did it this is this is what they do it's it's a lot of stuff they be like oh yeah, yeah we wrote this it's colonized work okay so as a prolific artist i wish he you could see some of this art i was like i will go to click on it as a prolific artist, Agrules has provided the illustrations for a number of his books, as well as the cover art for the periodical Psychedelics, their uses and implications. His activity as a painter includes exhibits at Princeton University Art Museum, the Inner City Gallery in LA. His murals can still be seen at the Psychology Department of University of California, Davis, and the Dan Evans Library Building, the Everstate Green College. Remember, Everstate College was the one that was high, uh, bringing in those kids that couldn't read or something. They had a whole big scandal in Washington with Shogam, Trunga, blah, blah, blah. I can't repeat. Uh, I can't repeat that. All right. His visionary drawings were also exhibited at the Time is Our Gallery. His, his Doors of Perception paintings exhibited at the Time is Our Gallery. Okay, that's his thing. We're not going to read all of this. He's talking about the harmonic conversions. Okay. I mean, I don't even want to read any more of this. Because it's kind of like, oh, he passed away on March 23rd, 2011. So he's gone. Okay, so they took him out. He, he died on the exact same time of his birth? Okay, alright, well, they got him out here looking like Jesus. Let's see. This is his artwork. This is his, this is his famous artwork that got him all of this. Whatever. Okay, I just I, I want I, I needed to be seen. This is this is his artwork that got him into Princeton, like to do an art exhibit. Like okay. Um No offense to this man, whoever he may be, but um he's they got him here dressed like Jesus. And I got a problem with that in general. So, I'm not going to get into any more of this. I think I've droned on long about this. Um, I just, this, I don't even know what to say. Except to say that they have been using this information against us. I don't know exactly how. I don't know uh, the extent of it. I feel like it's pretty extensive. 
um, these 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 invaders um, from the south. They use this to to take us out because we were using our father's timeline and they came in with this, the mother's timeline, which we weren't supposed to have access to because the times had switched and yet they were still using it. And so this is what they used to take us out. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if you look back in history, how many of these battles took place between July the 22nd and July the um, 27th. Um, how many times were we just totally crushed during that time period? It's probably going to be more than one. Um, because they use that day out of time against us. That is, that's a day for peace and they use it for war. And we were, you know, not following this kind of timeline. And, um, you know, they just totally use it against us. So this is the kind, this is what we're up against. I mean, and, and the way that we, uh, again, the solution is to integrate this information. We're not going to battle. We're not fighting these people. We don't have to do anything except for to take this information, which is free, freely given on the internet and figure out how we integrate it into our lives so that we can take, uh, we can put our energetic signature into this, um, into this energy that's coming through. We just want to put our energetic signature to it. That's all we want to do. We can leave these people to continue whatever wickedness they're doing with this. Um, they'll take themselves out. We just want to go and add our energy to it so that the frequency can adjust to our energy the way that it's supposed to be. So again, the website here is loveoftime.org and you can look up your sign and all of that stuff. But um, we're going to be getting further into this. I just, I hate when I see stuff that just, it doesn't make any sense. And because, you know, whoever came up with it is the one that, you know, this guy's gone now. So they're never going to do any more looking into it and say, hey, this, this kind of would make more sense. This will go along with this. How do we integrate this? They just say, oh, what he did was perfect. We'll never, ever change it. Like, you know, that type of stuff bothers me. So I don't want to go any deeper into this because I can already feel the rage boiling up inside of me. So shalom, everyone, and we will see you in the next video.